Good morning guys. By the time I'm, I got here, Dan already cleaned that Mazda, the cylinder head of it. I'll show you that in a second when I switch the camera or turn around the camera. Yeah, and some someone asked like if we rest Sundays or not, because today is Sunday. No, unfortunately we don't have days off at the moment. It is what it is. We just opened the garage, so we have to do what we can uh, to make the most out of it. Um, so yeah, Dan's, Dan's got that cleaned. Uh, I'm going to put back the camshaft, obviously the tappets. I checked the tappets, how, how many of them, I, them are like reusable and then put them back, uh, give, give it uh, new ones if needed and uh, give, uh, put back the journals, camshafts and then fit it back together, uh, do the car cleaning on the remaining two ports and then test it. This one will go back to the, uh, together very likely today. In the meanwhile, then is cleaning, sorry, preparing the injectors for cleaning in the ultrasonic bath. And also have a look what he's got for us, like a uh, uniform, if you will. So if you would be interested um, getting a merch, let us know, maybe we can sort out something. But now let me switch the camera and show you how far we've got with these two Mazdas. So here it is, as I said, them two ports still needs to be done. Um, here is the cylinder head cleaned. I would say it's very, very good. Uh, get, then gave it a very good clean. So we are going, I'm going to put back the, the tappets, journals, camshafts, rocker arms, and then we are going to replace the exhaust pressure sensor, do engine flush, change the oil, and then take it for a test drive and check if the PO101 comes back or not. If not, we are good to go. We can let the owner know that he can come and pick it up very likely tomorrow. With this one, we are nearly halfway there. It just needs the oil shower, valve cover and a few other bits. We can start this one up then and then take it for test drive. Also, um, obviously do engine flush oil change on this one as well and check on the live data. Uh, and check for fault codes if the PO101 comes back or not. If not, we can let the owner know that it, the car is ready to go. And also that one on which we've done the exhaust camshaft inspection or valve car inspection. And it turned out that the exhaust camshaft is worn. So I contacted the owner and he said, okay guys, go ahead. So we're going to replace the exhaust camshaft, clean the cylinder head um, also I recommended him to check or drop the oil pan. So we are at the moment, it, uh, we are not going to replace the strainer. We're just going to check it. And once we checked it, and if we decide it needs replacement, obviously we'll need to let the owner know because we don't do anything without the consent of the owner. So we tell him what we found and then he can decide whether he wants it to be replaced, which would be obviously a smart thing to do if it is blocked. Um, we don't recommend cleaning, we recommend replacing it. And if, he, if it's clean, we just put back the oil pan and test the car. And very likely, if everything is good, we can give that one back to the owner as well. And this one, unfortunately, this one is giving us hard time because we're still fighting to get that, get that crankshaft bolt off. So at the moment, we don't know the solution to that. This is one of those which we which we we should think or which we wish we hadn't taken on because this is quite pain in the ass to be honest so i have put back the camshafts intake exhaust and i put back the journals and the bolts and let me tell you how i do it so i they are they are not tightened yet to the torque specs so basically i put back the journals the bolts and then um tighten them in a sequence but with hand only with a small ratchet till the journal meets or reaches the surface of the cylinder head and I keep the, the sequence or a sequence of the tightening procedure. So basically, um, okay, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. And I do the same on that. Well, but basically when I'm tightening it, I'm doing them small journals first. So first, second, third, fourth. I repeat the same on the exhaust side and I do this one as a last one. Uh, the reason I'm not doing um, since the beginning or from the beginning with the torque specs, which is f two stage. So first is a five newton meters, and the second is ten newton meters, is because the camshaft, the the rocker arms is pushing a camshaft a tiny bit. So I want to make sure. So I go little by little, and uh, doing it in the sequence of the torque specs, but 
with hand only till the camshaft uh, or journals reaches the surface of the cylinder head and now i'm going to bring the torque wrench and do the the tightening procedure so five newton meters and then 10 newton meters in the following order first second third fourth fifth so now the camshaft journal bolts are all tightened down now i'm going to put back the sprocket to the exhaust camshaft the way i'm going to do it i'm going to stick down a longer screwdriver and put back the tensional and then i can pull up the the sprocket push it on onto the uh, camshaft but it still won't be enough um, so once i will have it on it will be a little bit uh, sideways or like tilted it won't be straight all the way so how i straighten it basically with one of my uh, with my left hands i'm pushing that on whilst turning with a 23 mil spanner the exhaust camshaft towards the cabin a slight little bit until that straightens out and i can push it on all the way then i can put back that bolt um i'll show you that once i will have more time so not on this car but on another car so i just don't walk the walk but sorry so i just don't talk the talk but walk the walk as way i will to show you how i do it but at the moment uh, i don't have time and then is uh, picking up a car or helping the driver because it was towed to us on the trailer so he is having helping him unloading and i'm going to do this do this on my own so i'm going to do that off camera while well, show you once that is back on so the bolt is in i can cut the zip ties and tighten down that bolt to 130 newton meters and the valve cover can go back so very likely i'll be doing this one and then is going to be doing that one so the blue one is assembled together we're going to start it soon or in a bit then move it outside um, the valve cover is on on the black one i'm going to have then to get the two ports walnut blasted and then he's going to assemble the rest of the parts uh, in the meanwhile, I am going to take this one for a test drive and check everything if it is okay or not um, And then probably by the time I come back he will then we'll be finished with this one So I can take this one to the test drive and we will see what else we are going to do today So the walnut blasting is done Then is already touching up the surface and I'll ask him to do a recording of it like how it looks like because i'm going for a test drive with the another mazda just behind the roller shutter and going to test it and see if the po 101 comes back or not okay i am back from the test drive i managed to achieve 53.6 mpg i've done nearly 30 miles 28 and a half miles no fault code whatsoever so we are going to do the engine flush and then change the engine oil uh, also, I'll contact the owner and ask him, ask the permission of his, if he, if I can drive this car back home and then back here, and because that's a longer journey, maybe I think 40 miles one way, so it would be 80 miles if he is happy with that, uh, so that, so I can test it like uh, in, in on a longer run, and if it if it is not coming back, the Ford called the PO 101. Uh, we will consider it as a success and now let's have a look what Daniel has done with the other Mazda what has he achieved so far then it's halfway finished with the job the intake manifold is already on the EGR bi cooler bypass valve EGR is on cooler is on so basically charge pipe is left uh, intake box battery tray battery and that will be it and I'm going to check the live data on the Mazda which I came back with and then we're going to do the flush as I said and the on, uh, engine oil change so we can witness a human made error what then done wrong is he didn't put the vacuum hose lines before the EGR cooler I told him then no need to worry I've been there as well not <laughs> once not twice couple times so it happens as long as he can fix it it doesn't matter so what he needs to do now, he needs to just undo the that EGR pipe, the cooler, put that one first and then again everything back as it was. So that's why the chronological order really matters.
Also, I need to mention it is a lot better that he forget that the vacuum hose pipe slash whatever than the oil shower underneath the valve cover because this one is a lot easier to correct than that one. Everything has to come back or come off again. Ask me how I know I've been there as well. So I forgot the oil shower and then I had to take everything again back off uh, and then fit the oil shower. Um, yeah, so he is now removing the eject cooler and put, putting back that uh, vacuum pipe line, whatever. So that one is fired up as well. We are now bleeding the cooling system and once that's done, I'm going to take it for a test drive, check the live data and then do the flush on that one and then the other one as well and change the oil and we will see if we will have, we will be in the mood to do anything else today. So the black master is not good. I've been to three, three test drives already. Um, two actually, I forgot to put back one hose, rubber hose, I think that's a vacuum hose. This one which goes to the intake manifold, uh, sorry, intake box here. Um, but then noticed it, so we put it back. I changed one MUP sensor from another car. It still came back, the focus still came back after around five miles or a little bit more than five miles. So now we're going to, I think I'm going to go for a test drive later on with, uh, as the hose is pulled, pushed back on and with uh, another map sensor again, but we're going to smoke test the, the, the system. Then we're going to swap the parts. Uh, one by one to see if if any swap will sort out the issue. So we just came back from a test drive with Dan. We changed the EGR on this one with another one. Uh, fault code came back again. Uh, it is some few minutes past nine o'clock and the Darfur bridge will be closed from 10. So quite in a hurry, in a rush. So um, yeah, I need to make it. I need to get changed and need, need to make it before 10 p.m. before the closure. So basically what we are going to do, I've got at home two brand new, I've got a brand new intake shutter valve, a brand new EGR valve. So we're going to swap that and see, but very likely I think it will be the vacuum pump because on the test drive, when I pressed the brake, then the code came on or the fault came on. So yeah, we will see anyways, but I'm ending it here. Um, thank you guys very much for the watching and uh, see you very soon in the next video. So take care and bye bye.